tell us what is an autoimmune disease? Autoimmune diseases are more common than ever before. And what they are are really your immune system no longer functioning in the proper way. So when you think about your immune system, the purpose of your immune system is to keep you safe from foreign invaders. If you get a bacteria, then your immune system's supposed to create antibodies that attack and kill that invader and keep you healthy. Your immune system also does other things like if you bang your knee on the corner of the bed, it gets swollen because your body's sending inflammatory mediators there with all the blood and all the cells necessary to repair the damage. So our immune system is really what keeps us intact and keeps us healthy. But when you've got problems with your immune system, which we now know are mediated by an excess amount of inflammation, then the immune system stops functioning properly. And instead of just fighting against foreign invasions like bacteria and viruses, it can start attacking your own cells and your own organs because it can no longer recognize the difference. And that's what we call autoimmune disease. And there's many different diseases, as you mentioned, um, and some of them can cause things like arthritis and other ones can actually cause organ failure like lupus, where, you know, it can attack your kidneys, your brain, your heart, your lungs, and end up killing people, usually at a young age, usually pretty young people are affected by diseases like lupus. And actually what ends up happening is the immune system is so out of whack that it can be attacking healthy tissues and not fighting infections. Like I myself had lupus from the age of 16 and I was in kidney failure from lupus but I had a sinus infection that lasted six months because I couldn't fight a cold. My, my immune system was doing all the wrong stuff and there wasn't a, enough of it left over to do the right thing. Can you give us a, a list? Just tell us about some of the diseases that are autoimmune diseases, because I think people might, mm-hmm. certainly I might think some diseases are, I don't know whether they're autoimmune or not. Yeah, yeah there's so many. The most common ones we hear about would be lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's, Uh, scleroderma, and multiple sclerosis. And then there's people who have kind of a a hodgepodge of symptoms where they might be told they have mixed connective tissue disease, which just means you have some signs or symptoms of multiple different types of autoimmune disease. And then others who are told you have autoimmune stuff, but the doctors don't know exactly which thing it is. And really, in my mind, it's all the same. I don't consider that there's 80 autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. There's an autoimmune process that happens in the body. And which antibodies you develop or which symptoms you get might be helpful for the doctor in terms of what he's billing, right? When we're billing, we need a diagnosis. When we're prescribing a medicine and justifying the medicine, we need a diagnosis. But in terms of the process and how it happens in the body, it's really all the same, which is why I'm able to help people reverse any and all of those really with the same protocol, because in terms of how the body's functioning and where the autoimmune disease is coming from, it's really the same thing. And your body doesn't know that it's filling any certain diagnoses. And that's actually a good thing, you know, that you don't need to have a set in stone diagnosis. If you're just starting to have symptoms, you can still change your lifestyle and your diet and reverse those without ever having known exactly which billing code it would have fit into. Right. So So is Parkinson's an autoimmune disease? Parkinson's is not considered autoimmune per se. Uh, It is an inflammatory condition. And actually I've had uh, someone with Parkinson's do my rapid recovery program. And uh, that's a four week program where you're, you're stuck having to communicate with me every day and I control your life and (laughs) everything you eat and everything you do. And uh, he actually did my program because his neurologist was interested in my program and wanted to know if it could be beneficial for Parkinson's. So he was kind of, he agreed to do it, but it wasn't necessarily something he would have, looked for on his own. And he ate a pretty standard diet, meat and dairy and all those things. And within four weeks, his symptoms were so much better that his friends and family noticed how much better he looked and his doctor was able to lower his medication dosage. And then after he was done with this four week experiment, he went back to his previous diet and he said he quickly went back to the same condition he was in before he started. And that really was uh, eye opening for the patient to say, whoa, not only did I get better rapidly, but I was able to undo it pretty quickly too by returning to the foods that I used to eat. Before you go into your story, would you just let us know what the traditional medical community would say to a patient, whatever it might be, whatever the autoimmune disease might be, um, what the, the root cause is, what's kind of the uh, you know, agreeance in the traditional you know, medical community? 
we don't really get into causes much uh, mm. besides a genetic predisposition, predisposition, sorry. Mm. So we know that certain diseases run in certain families, right? Certain families, everyone's got heart disease or colon cancer or breast cancer or autoimmune disease. And so that's really all the attention we give it is, oh, does anyone else in your family have arthritis or autoimmune? Okay, that's about it. The rest of the attention is really put on treatment. Now, according to Western medicine, if you, in all the books, uh, these are incurable and they are chronic, which means that once you're diagnosed, you will have this for the rest of your life and there's no way to undo it. It's just going to continue on and that they're only treatable and treatable using medications. Now, the medications that we use in autoimmune disease are mostly immunosuppressants and anti-malarial drugs, medicines that are extremely potent and powerful. They have very strong side effects. You know, most commonly people will be put on steroids. Steroids will shut down your inflammatory response, but if you're on them long term, they also dissolve your bones and cause osteoporosis. It also makes you more likely to get infections. So it's a very difficult course because really the only medical treatment we can provide is things that are going to shut off the immune system. But with no immune system, you are now more vulnerable to other infections and issues uh, that somebody would get that had immunosuppression as well. So it's a very dangerous thing uh, to have the disease because it could be deadly. It's dangerous to treat because the medications are so powerful. And there's really no hope given to people. So, you know, I, I can kind of tie this in with my own story. You know, I was diagnosed with lupus at 16. And at 16, I had the typical symptoms of lupus in terms of I had this rash across my face. I had migraines. I had joint pain that would travel through my body, my shoulders, my fingers, my knees, my toes. And, um, you know, where I'm literally limping trying to get to my classes. And then when I went to the doctor and they finally diagnosed it, which took over a year to diagnose, I was told that I was in stage four kidney failure. So by the time they even discovered what was wrong with me, I was already in stage four kidney failure. I was told by my nephrologist that if they didn't do something extremely aggressive, that I would be dead in six months. So, I mean, these diseases are just devastating, and especially, you know, when it attacks somebody who's at a young age. And at 16, I don't think, I, I know that I didn't really ever understand or believe that I could be dying, but my mother and father and my grandparents were just, you know, they were just crying about it. I mean, my grandma was on her knees begging God to take her life and spare me. It was just like horrific what it, what it did to the family. And what they said was, you know, at the time, we didn't have all the fancy meds we have now. Now, even though nowadays we have more fancy medications, the outcomes have not changed. So there's millions, if not billions of dollars in research money being spent. Outcomes are not changing, but people are spending tens of thousands a month for their medicines and still staying sick. But back then we had high dose steroids and then they were experimenting with using chemotherapy. And so I was one of the first people where they were using chemotherapy and chemotherapy is normally used for cancer, right? But the side effect of chemotherapy is that it suppresses the immune system, which is why a lot of people with cancer die from infections. So they thought, what if we use the side effect and intentionally shut off the immune system, like rebooting your computer? Right. If we shut it off and then let it restart, maybe the lupus won't be active anymore. And they didn't know how much to give me or how long to do it. So they kept raising the dose every month. And then, um, you know, nowadays they do it for maybe uh, one month or a couple months. But back in those days, they didn't know how much to give. So I did it for two years straight. Oh so from 16 to 18, I was taking high dose steroids, seven pills total of different kinds of medicines and IV chemotherapy, just in an effort to save my kidneys. So, I mean, it was excruciating. The treatment's excruciating. I remember at 16, I was always kind of a smart mouth. And I remember at 16 telling my doctors, you know, I didn't feel sick till you guys tried to save me because I feel way worse taking all this medicine than I did before. Um, but after two years of chemotherapy, finally, the kidneys went into remission. So it worked in the long run that I did go into a remission. Now, remission in autoimmune disease is not being cured. It's not being healed. Every one of my blood tests still were positive for the lupus antibodies. Um, every one of my tests showed that I still had protein being lost in my urine because my kidneys were not fully functional, but they weren't failing and they weren't stage four, but they were stable. And that's what remission is in autoimmune disease. You're currently not dying from the disease. You're stable. But 
I still took medicine. I still would have breakthrough arthritic pain. If I went in the sun, I would get rashes. I would get migraines. So it was just maintaining kind of the status quo and hoping that I don't relapse and get worse. And that's really what remission is like with these diseases. And that's what we teach people is that you will continue to be sick. There will be more things down the road that will get worse, but we can try to use medicines to slow it down, to put you into remissions, um, and hopefully save your organs. It doesn't always work. I mean, Selena Gomez got chemotherapy too, but she still ended up with a kidney transplant, right? So um, it's not something that even money can save you from, right? You have to have you know, just hope that your body responds to these drugs. Um, and for me, I did. I, I stayed in remission through college. And then I had this great idea to become a doctor. And uh, when you've got autoimmune disease, they always tell you, always get enough sleep and avoid stress. Um, so medical school seemed like a great <laughs> idea. Uh, <laughs> it's just constant balance of save your life, risk your life. Like, what are you going to do? And that's really what life is with autoimmune disease. And, you know, thankfully, in spite of all these diagnoses and, and the things I had to deal with, um, I was raised by an incredibly tough, amazing family, especially the women in my family. They are just warriors. And, and my, my uh, grandmother who helped raise me is a Holocaust survivor. So I was really raised with like, one, you fight for your life no matter what. And two, um, if you wake up and you're free, you're, it's a good day. <laughs> so yeah, even beautiful. with chemotherapy and everything else, I still always felt really lucky and blessed in spite of the medical issues that I faced. And I credit how well I did really on, on the strength of my family, because we do know now that high amounts of stress, depression, anxiety, they actually make autoimmune disease worse. And the fact that I could keep a positive mindset and feel grateful, even in the face of all of these illnesses, really helped me with being as good as I can, could with my illness, even while I was still sick with it. Hey folks, okay, back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review, does not need to be long, does not need to be a whole story, just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.